serving clients. Serving clients is the easiest way, I think, to get started earning money online that is good money and to build valuable experience. Serving clients is the first thing I was able to do successfully to make $1,000 online. I did lots of other things like selling t-shirts and helping people out with video game addiction. I did all kinds of little plots and schemes that made a few dollars, but serving clients very quickly, as soon as I started trying to serve clients, within a month or two, I'd already made $1,000 serving clients. The reason serving clients is so good is because the focus is on doing something directly for someone else. With trying to make products online, it's often a lot more difficult to get that specific focus out there because of your own incentive to make money out of selling the product. With a client, it's obvious no client's going to pay you if you don't help them out with what they need. It's a very simplified version essentially of selling a product. You sell one specific service to a client and then you help them with it. Serving clients, therefore, I think is the best opportunity for most people getting started online because you only have to be a little bit farther ahead than the client to help them effectively. When I started trying to get Facebook ads clients, those were my first very profitable clients for doing Facebook marketing and advertising. The only thing I had was a little bit more experience promoting my own Facebook page than most of them did promoting theirs. Now, some clients actually seem to have as much or more than me. And th what they liked is that I had different areas of expertise than they did. That's why serving clients is so great. Often to make a product, you have to have a lot of expertise and be able to put it in a nice package and sell it and then build your audience or prefer you want to try and build your audience first. Otherwise, you can, it's a lot harder to do it the other way. You see, it takes often years of serving clients to get experience needed to make great products. At least for me, after I'd served clients for years, then I had a lot of good knowledge to teach. I had a lot of good experience to show how to do it yourself in such a way that could be easily applied because I'd helped hundreds of other people do it before. Getting clients often seems like this big black hole, like, well, how do you get them? And the part I missed, how do you keep them? You don't have to work that hard to get clients if you keep a high percentage of the clients you do get. This was something I missed big time with serving clients. There's three key things with serving clients and I understood the first thing that you have to have something, you have proven experience or experience you can demonstrate to help with. So I realized to start that no one was going to hire me to help most of the time with something that I had no proven experience doing. I set out to build proof that I was a great Facebook ads and marketer. And then from there, step two is easier, getting clients. Once you've got something you can help with, then it's a matter of simply reaching the right person at the right time in the right way to get a client, which that's not so easy. However, you don't have to get very many clients if you'll keep the ones you have. I set out in my business thinking that the more clients I could get, the better. So I ended up getting hundreds of clients in more than 20 countries and keeping only two of them for more than two years. Guess where nearly all of the profit I made serving clients came from? The two clients I had longer than two years. The one client just canceled with me, effective starting this month because he finally, after years of working with me, just ended up with an office manager who could also help with his Google ads. And he figured, well, since the office manager had those skills, there's no point in paying me also. And I said, I totally agree, I wouldn't do that. 
you're lucky you have an office manager. Let them do it. I'm happy to not take any more money from you. That client's paid me tens of thousands of dollars, most of which over the last two years has required very little work. Now, I've worked with the client for four years. The first two years, there was a lot of work doing their Google ads and doing other services for them. The majority of the profit in the relationship with that client came in the second 50% of the relationship. With 99% of my clients, I missed the most profitable part of the relationship because I only focused on getting clients. With my number one client, I built a relationship with them that started out in the range of hundreds of dollars and has now got to the point in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is what happens when you keep clients. So if you can learn anything from this book, learn the value of keeping clients. A lot of what I see other people advertising is about getting clients. Rarely do I see the focus on keeping those clients. It's the same as dating. If you go out on a bunch of first and second dates, it's often a, a pretty unhappy and not feeling very good about yourself or about the other people you're trying to date. With my wife, we have had just the most unbelievably great relationship. It started off better than it's been with any other girl before her and then has continued to get better from there. My relationship with my wife is in absolute outer space compared to any of the other things I did dating. The same thing goes with serving clients because ultimately life is very similar. The same dynamics, which is funny if you're new to this, the same dynamics that go into dating go into getting started with clients. You want to make sure you both want the same thing out of the client relationship as well. In dating, it's obvious to see, for example, if you are dating and you don't want to have kids, or if you're older and you're dating, you don't want to live together, whatever thing it is, it's important to get those big things out there in the open right up front, preferably, so you don't end up then all of a sudden down the road trying to force someone to do what you want or looking at having wasted a bunch of time on something you should have known to start with. With clients, to me, the main thing I need to know up front is does the potential client have the money to pay me? In fact, that's almost all I need to know up front. Thankfully, there's a simple solution for that. The client needs to pay first. I set it up that way because I work really hard to show that I have the experience to do a good job for a client. I have courses all over, I have YouTube videos all over. The, by the time the client finds me, they know I, or they reasonably suspect, I can do a good job helping them. Meanwhile, I know nothing about them. I have no good way of telling the difference between one potential client and another. The only fair way to do it is simply require payment to get started. This eliminates the majority of the guesswork on my end. And the second thing as a part of that payment is to have a payment threshold that I'm comfortable working with most anyone at. When I started trying to serve clients with Facebook ads, I set the initial campaign price at $99 for campaign setup. The problem I had it was that I didn't feel like working very much after I got that $99. I wasn't going to do 10 hours of work for you if you paid me $99. I was willing to do a couple hours of work for you if you paid $99. That didn't work out very good because clients who paid $99, the price for them was very high. They expected a lot of work. This one lady, I remember talking to her right when I was about to get in the shower. She called me and was texting me and emailing and 
was after I'd already built our campaign up and I finally just said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing anything else. I'll give you your money back. I don't want to work with you anymore. That motivated me to raise the price. Also, if I was going to endure that kind of work with a client, I better charge more. And I eventually, now I charge $499 for an ad campaign and I make it clear that all I do is supervise. My friend Albert works with me part-time and he then actually does the Facebook ads under what I set up and make the plan. I take a look at how things are initially and then I work with Albert on the feedback end of it. He asks any questions, he comes straight to me for the questions then. I had the price at $399 and we got a new client and all the emails and time Albert spent with it, I decided we better put this up an another $100 because most people will pay $399 will pay $499 and if someone's strictly stuck at only $399, I'd rather just exclude them and take less clients at $499. It's tricky with clients to get the pricing just right. And sometimes there's no way except to just set a price that you are comfortable with, a price that for what you've offered to do, you're comfortable doing it. And you're comfortable doing it without a resentment. If you set the price too low, you're likely like me to get a little bit of a resentment about it. Like, well, I gave them such a deal. They shouldn't be expecting all this work out of me. It's just like dating. You want a good, happy relationship. If only it were as simple with clients as having dating profiles. Uh, dating actually in a lot of ways is more simple than trying to get started working with a client. At least on, well, six years ago, back when I used a dating site, they had, you could specify on there whether you wanted children and all these other things, which then pre-qualifies like okay well I don't want to go out with a girl who says not sure about having children ah here we go she says definitely want to have kids good I'll go out with her she says doesn't smoke good she says social drinker or good that that's works good for me now obviously everything's not perfectly accurate on dating profiles but you get the idea the dating profile today allows you to pre-qualify well, with clients, you need ways to pre-qualify as well. And you need to try and be on the same page right away about what's important. The money to me is if you're going to serve a client, the client needs to prove to you they have the money. So there's nothing easier to do than just charge up front. I realize some clients won't work with you or me if they have to pay for the whole service up front. And that's fine. Some people would prefer to get free calls. I've stopped taking calls prior to serving clients now because the amount of free calls versus the amount of clients. I just had a guy email me yesterday and Albert is still a bit new to serving clients even though he has a full-time job that he's essentially created out of serving clients. I referred my friend Rob and Albert now does 30 hours a week for him. So even though Albert is in the middle of serving clients more than I ever did, Albert is fairly new to the process of getting and making a new client relationship since Albert's worked with me and then a referral from my friend. And Albert then is gets a little worried about, well, what if the client doesn't want to pay for the call? And I said, Albert, I don't want a client who expects to have a call for free and who's not willing to pay for one, willing to pay $299 to have a call with me. Now, you might think that you're insane, Jerry. Uh, who would want to work with you? I only want to work with people who are willing either to just pay the $499 and then work strictly through email or willing to pay $299 to talk to me first for 30 minutes, up to 30 minutes, and then pay another $499 to then work with Albert and me via email. Those are the only clients I'm interested in working with. 
And now, yes, I have the luxury of doing that given how my business is set up. However, I had the luxury of doing that before, I just didn't see it. It's better to have fewer clients that you do a great job with and then have time to make things like YouTube videos, have time to make things like books, have time to hang out with your family and friends. Have time for your hobbies and other interests. It's much better to have fewer clients just like dating. It's much better to have one wife who I'm completely on the same page with than it is to passively or whatever you would call trying to date several people at once. I have a wonderful working relationship with my wife. And it makes everything in life so much easier. The times in my life where I tried to date multiple girls by comparison were a complete disaster. No one was happy. None of the girls were happy and I wasn't happy either. Serving clients has the same properties. Having one or two clients you do a great job with often is worth much more than having 10 or 20 that you do a halfway job with. Just look at Albert. Albert right now, he graduated college. He was going to work with me full time. Then I got banned from Udemy. Albert then persisted in both applying to jobs and checking with me to see what I had available. I worked out that he could do part time 20 hours a week with me. And then I referred my friend who's got the wall of coins startup, uh, Bitcoin cash startup who I worked with to get a half percent ownership of his company. I referred him because he Rob was telling me, Jerry, I need some help with my marketing. Do you want to help? I said, well, no, Rob, I have enough going on. What about my friend Albert? 